everyone. Welcome back. I'm Leslie. And I'm Justin. And we are Business and Tech for Your Future. Just a reminder, this channel is all about helping you to find the mentorship, meaning, and motivation you need in your life. Please comment down below and tell us what do you need more of right now? Mentorship, meaning, or motivation so we can give you what you need. All right, everyone. So we have a pretty amazing show today. But before we start, I want to go over a couple things. Uh, so last week, we had a couple people comment on the video. I want to give a couple of shouts to those people. So first off is Jonathan Potter, second, Christina Southam, and third, Tristan McComas. So everybody, today's show, we're going to have a special guest. His name is Jamie Ginn. Jamie is the CTO of IntuitScore. He has a background in cyber defense and cyber warfare. He volunteers as a CompTIA instructor and a mentor for the U.S. Air Force Association Cyber Patriot Program, where middle and high school students learn cybersecurity skills and compete against other students. He has a husband and a father, and he is passionate about helping others enter the cybersecurity workforce. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Jamie again. Okay, Jamie, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm excited to be with you guys. Thanks so much for coming. Good to meet you. Thank you. It's good to meet you too. Awesome. I'm really excited. Uh, so we'll just pop right into this. So for our first question, uh, I know I just introduced you as a CTO for your company you work for. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what your role entails? Sure. So as the CTO for Intuitus, I'm responsible for customer facing technologies. We are a cybersecurity company. So I research and vet and deploy and build models around the technology that we're going to use to offer the cybersecurity services that we have. Um, that includes a lot of different avenues. Part of that is helping to onboard new technical people and training them. Um, and in some capacity, I, I serve as a sales engineer to introduce our service offerings to potential customers. That's awesome. How did you get where you're at today? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so uh, it, it's been a long road. And I think the biggest thing that I can say about how I got to where I am is just perseverance. Um, I've, I've done a lot of different things, but I just got interested in the field and started studying it on my own and pursuing it. And through some other opportunities, um, I kind of honed my skill set and got a good offering and it brought me to where I am. I've kind of climbed the ladder to get to where I am now. Yeah, cybersecurity is kind of the big field, like rising with everything going on with threats. So uh, I mean, basically anybody trying to get in this field is it's you're not going to be without a job um, as long as you're doing it right. Um, so, but that's great, though, Jamie, that you're in this field right now. And I think you're having to, doing really successful things and doing great things right now, too. So um, on to the next one. So why do you love what you do? You know, I, I thought a lot about this as we were talking earlier, and there's several reasons. I think um, one of which is because I see a need and I really want to help people. Um, everyone uses technology, right? It, it's, it touches every part of our lives, even people who don't think they know anything about technology. They would be surprised how much technology impacts their life in some way or another. And I saw a need because in that availability of information and availability of services, people don't realize um, in some cases how vulnerable it can be, how exposed it can be. Um, so I saw that as a need, an opportunity to help protect people who really don't understand. The other thing that makes me really love this industry is because it always changes, I like the challenge. So every day something new happens, something new comes out, I'm always learning, um, and that's huge to me. And the other reason I, I would say that I really like what I do is I get to help people. Um, and I'll talk about that later on in the interview, but I get to help people who want to enter the industry, who are trying to make a career change, who don't know what direction they want to go, I help them discover talents and, and resources that maybe they didn't even know they had. And that's really cool to watch. That's, a, that's awesome, honestly, that you're doing that. And I, I read your intro a little bit about what you're doing with your volunteering and everything for all these people. So that's pretty amazing in itself. And so I really commend you on that, that you, Thank you. and all the other things you do on top of that. So that's pretty impressive. Thank you. And you already kind of went into this, but can you go over maybe in even a little more detail about the fields that you're in, as well as some other cyber and IT roles? Sure. Yeah. So a, a lot of times I think people outside of technology don't realize how broad cybersecurity is. You know, when we talk about entering cybersecurity, that is a very loaded term. Um, so there's many different facets of cybersecurity. And, and I'll go over what some of those are later on. But the field of cybersecurity that I'm in deals primarily with detection and response. So um, I, my organization is hired by customers to look for threats in their environment, identify them, and then help them mitigate those threats and figure out what to do about it. And this is from a technical level and also from a policy level. So all aspects of that. 
Um, that, that is really what we do. And I think um, if you were to categorize that down, you, you can kind of divide some parts of cybersecurity into what they call red hat, I mean, black hat hackers um, or white hat hackers. There, there's those kind of things. And then you have red teams and blue teams. So I'm not a, I'm not a hacker in this capacity. I want to make that clear. I can, I can talk about that later. But I'm probably what you would call a blue team. So the team in cybersecurity um, that's not trying to break things, but that's trying to catch the guys who do. Awesome. That, yeah, that's great. That's a really good explanation. I think a lot of people are going to find that useful because, I mean, I think most people don't know that unless you actually have been in the field and have actually researched it all. So that's really helpful in itself. Uh, so would you mind kind of sharing with us like how you've helped people establish themselves or grow within this field? Sure. So I, I think people are surprised when they realize how technical they really are, um, especially this generation. They've been exposed to technology almost since they were born in some cases, and, and they've got more of a knack for it than they realize. It's just how do you harness that and then do something with it? Um, and so a lot of people, they look at this and they say, well, I'm just overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. So a couple of things that I do to try to help with that is I, I don't have an ongoing session right now, but um, I do volunteer as a CompTIA instructor to help people get CompTIA certifications and then enter the industry. So I teach those classes and host those classes when I have an open session. Um, and, and as you said in, in the intro as well, I also volunteer with the U.S. Air Force's Cyber Patriot Program. So in that capacity, I help young people, especially high school and middle school students, really discover how fun this industry can be and maybe even get some certifications before they even graduate from high school. And they get to compete and do these things too. So in that way, they get to really understand, is this something I want to do or is it not? And it, in, in, that, in that regard, it's not for everybody, right? Just like any industry. Um, you have to really investigate it and find out if it's what you want to do. But for a lot of people, they're surprised to know it is a lot of fun. Um, so that's what I really try to do to help people is help them train and get certified and help them get exposed to it and just have somebody they can talk to about it. Yeah, and I, I have to agree with you there. And one thing I kind of see from the cybersecurity IT field a lot of times is, you know, the degree isn't always the big thing, but they really like the experience and then the certs and then it's degree as well. Um, but, you know, I've met a lot of people in this field that, you know, don't even have a degree, but seem to do pretty well with just the certs and experience and companies seem to value that because, you know, colleges don't always teach you the skills you need to do everything. It gives you kind of a baseline, but then you have these guys that just play around with the, uh, these programs at home and they're amazing with what they can do and they're self-taught. So I, I really commend people that can do that. And that's pretty, that's pretty important that I see so far. Yeah, and I just another comment on that. I, that is so true about the certifications and stuff. Yes, the college degree is important, but you can be just as successful, if not more so, in this field with the right certifications and getting yourself some experience. And there are ways to get that experience, too. Um, you know, outside of, you, you say, you look for a job, and they say, we want you to have three to five years of experience. Well, there are, there are internship opportunities. There are mentorship opportunities. There are other ways to get the experience so that then you can go out and get one of those other jobs. And it pays really well. This is a field that, that has a good salary base, I would say. I, I agree. I definitely agree with that one. <laughs> so what drives your vision? Oh, man, that's a huge one. <laughs> Um, really, if I had to narrow down what my vision is, my vision is really to help people. Um, and what drives that is because I know where I was um, before I got into this field, wondering what I was going to do, feeling like I had a particular skill set, but I didn't know where it fit. And I was kind of, you know, looking at different avenues for that. But I remember that. And I, I imagine there's other people out there that feel the same way. And that motivates me and drives me to want to help them. And it wants, it makes me want to help my customers. Also, you know, I'm patriotic. I believe that uh, we're all citizens here and we all need to be able to help each other. And in that regard, our, our nation and the critical infrastructure of our nation is really important to me. And by helping to protect people from cyber threats in all regards, not just in the government sector, but in the private sector and in the commercial sector as well, um, you're really helping to protect a whole nation. Um, and that, that resonates well with me, that motivates me. I agree. I think our critical infrastructure, as we have seen, uh, is pretty vulnerable as it stands. I mean, it's aging. There's a lot of issues and vulnerabilities that are coming out every day. You know, there's tons of hackers that we see that are like, you know, don't even need that much to be do a lot of damage personally. So that's been a huge issue. And that's why it's such a big concern because you don't need too much to do a lot. You just have to have the skill set, a computer and you know, Wi-Fi and you can do a lot of damage. So 
you know, I really appreciate you talking about critical infrastructure because I, I do see that as a big issue right now. Um, yeah, and, and I'll, I'll comment on that just real quick, Justin. Critical infrastructure is hiring a lot of cyber professionals right now. So employment opportunities there. Yeah, I think they, they even started their own, the CISA, a Cyber yes. Infrastructure Security Agency under Department of Homeland Security to deal with that specifically. So that shows you how much, you know, in the past few years, uh, everything's kind of shifted uh, to the critical infrastructure. So I think that's really important. Um, so you've had a lot of accomplishments, uh, a lot of different things you do. Out of all your accomplishments, what are you most proud of? Well... You know, I, I thought about this too, and it's hard to say. I've done a lot of technical stuff um, that, that I'm proud of. That I, It's always awesome to take a project and then watch it grow from the ground up and then see it work. Whether you're a developer, whether you're building a network infrastructure, whether you're designing a cybersecurity tool, whatever it is, that's exciting. And I've had a lot of those experiences, those, oh, this works, and, and I was a part of this, and that's great too. But I'd have to say the biggest accomplishment for me um, are the people that I feel like I've been able to help um, and that I've been able to work with and lead to see them gain more confidence in themselves, build a skill set that, that makes them proud to talk about it, that I would consider to be my greatest accomplishment. I'm really impressed with how others focused you are. That's uh, very unique, I feel like. Thank you. Um, what would you say, um, do you know about any other free or low cost trainings that you think that our audience might be interested in? Sure. I, I, there's, there's a few I'd like to talk about. Um, one of which is, is what I do. And like I said, I don't have an open session right now for, for the trainings that I do. I got pretty overwhelmed a while back and had to back off a little bit. And it's small, right? It's just me um, that teaches those and, and it's pretty open. But that's an opportunity for those who might be interested. Reach out to me on LinkedIn um, or somewhere like that and let me know you're interested and I can help try to guide you in the direction you want to go. There are several others and some of which you've already talked about. And, and most of these are websites where you start, but cyber- A little bit, sorry. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? We oh. can't hear you right oh. now. Hmm. Uh-oh. Internet connection. Uh. I can hear you guys. Oh, okay. okay, you're back so, now, Okay, sorry. so let's okay. pick up where, uh, we got to pick up where, where did we, where you, you kind of dropped yeah, off. I think at, you said there's a few others that I'd okay. like. Yeah. All right. I'll just start there. <laughs> there's a few other resources I'd like to talk about too. One of which I know you guys have already talked about, but that's Cybrary. They're great. They have a lot of free courses that you can take ranging in all kinds of different things, tech related from computer programming to cybersecurity certifications, whatever it is. They're great. Some of those require some payment, but it's relatively minimal but their content is great. Another one, this is also paid most of the time. They do have some free resources on YouTube, but that's CBT Nuggets. Um, they have short videos that introduce and teach topics, but they're very interactive. So much so that, you know, a lot of these technical courses, you get bored and you're like, I can't listen to this anymore, you know? <laughs> it's just so dry, but CBT Nuggets is great. They're entertaining, they're fun to watch. They've got a lot of stuff on the screen. They're really good. They're not completely free though. For those that work in the government sector that are veterans, military veterans, FedVTE is a great resource for that community. Um, they have a lot of free offerings and training opportunities for the veteran or government employee community. Um, they're, they're a great resource. Pearson View is now offering some free courses. Um, edX is another great resource. They have courses that you can pay to get a certificate, but if you just wanna hone your skills, you don't have to pay, you can sign up to just audit any of their classes or just sit in the back of any of their classes and that's great too. And then lynda.com is a kind of an up and coming one. They have some cyber cybersecurity resources as well. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, there's a lot of resources, especially for veterans. I got my uh, one of my certs through uh, Onwards Opportunity, uh, VCP, I think, VCTP, I think it was called uh, when I got out of the Navy. So that really helped me get my CISSP. Uh, really good resources out there for anybody that's interested. And those will also be in the links as well uh, that people can check out after the show. Um, so, you know, we talked about a lot of stuff, but currently are there any potential jobs or opportunities either in your company or another that you know that you can share with the audience? Sure. I'll talk about that a little bit. And I kind of want to go back to what our discussion about the cybersecurity industry overall, as we talk about this a little bit. So, 
Um, within my organization right now, we're not hiring. We're kind of like a lot of other people going through the COVID-19 situation. We're kind of holding on to what we've got and we're waiting to see what the future holds, right? But there's been an influx in technology usage. So I'm seeing some facets of cybersecurity increase their, um, the people that they're bringing on and the positions that they have to deal with this because everybody is working from home. There's more issues that have to be dealt with, especially with the cloud service providers. Um, they, they're having to bring on more people to deal with this. Um, but there are a lot of opportunities out there. The, there's a gem, the general metric is that there will be a 3.5 million person shortage by 2021 in cybersecurity, generally speaking. And what that does is that it creates a lot of job opportunities, but it also increases the salary because there's a high demand for the professionals and these companies have to be competitive. So the jobs are there, even in spite of this, you could go on Indeed or LinkedIn right now and see tons of security jobs listed there. Um, but bear in mind, that is a broad term, a security job. There are so many different facets of that. You have ethical hackers that get hired to come in and test an environment and see if they can discover vulnerabilities. Um, you have threat detection and response analysts, which is the field that I'm primarily focused in. I've dabbled in the other a little bit too. Um, and then you've got security engineers. In a lot of cases, those are programmers that are building security tools. You've got security governance. And in some of the security governance cases, you don't have to be highly technical, but you help develop policy and procedure for cybersecurity and those kinds of things too. And then there's cyber forensics and all these other things, right? And you can keep going down the list. Um, but I would encourage your viewers to research what opportunities there are within cybersecurity because it's huge. And when you pick a certification path, say that's how you want to enter the industry, you want to get certified. It's typically more than one certification, you pick a path. You're going to want to kind of know which one of these fields you want to get certified for, and that certification path will lead you in that direction. Nice, those are great words of advice. It's been really good getting to know you a little bit and hearing about the impressive path that you've taken and how you are really now trying to be a servant leader and mentor other people as well. Do you have any other Thank words you. of advice for our audience? Um, if I could give some advice about this, it would be don't be overwhelmed. The industry's huge, you hear about cybersecurity, there's these attacks in the news and you think, what does that mean? I don't understand any of this stuff. That's okay. It will all make sense eventually if you decide to go this route, but don't let it overwhelm you. It's easy to look at this industry and get overwhelmed and think I could never do this. I don't know how I'm going to ever get a job in this. I don't think I'll ever understand this. Don't start there. Start small um, with your education and, and just learn one piece at a time and get confident in that and then move on to the next thing. Um, the other advice I would give is to start networking now. Meet people in the industry, build a good LinkedIn profile and make those connections. There are seminars and webinars and all kinds of events that, that you can go to. A lot are free um, where you can learn a lot about this and meet people that work in the industry and find out what you're going to like in the industry, what field you're going to like. That's a huge resource is, is to meet these people and get to know them. Um, but, but again, I would say don't be overwhelmed figure out what path you want to go down, network with people, and then just start learning. A lot of this is self-taught. You can get these certifications completely on your own if you have the drive to do it. Um, there's plenty of free study resources out there for these certification tracks. So just jump in with both feet and start at the bottom and work your way up. That is amazing advice. Yeah, we're going to have another video where I'm going to put a couple certification paths up for people and resources for that as well. Obviously, we're going to put of the stuff you've provided as well that will get in the descriptions for everybody. But, you know, Jamie, honestly, this has been a really amazing interview. I think, uh, you know, I've learned something, Leslie's learned something. So I think this has been pretty amazing so far. So, you know, we just want to thank you. And we're really hoping our audience takes a lot from this because I really think this is a lot of valuable information that honestly it's, we put a lot into one video um, and, you know, now people can take that as it is and ask questions on um, the comments and everything. And I'm really excited to see where this goes, but, you know, I really appreciate you coming out today um you know if there's nothing else you know i just want to say you know we really do appreciate this and we really are excited to see where you go with this and we're really hoping everyone takes a lot from this channel but uh, you know if that's everything giving last words leslie uh, maybe just if anyone in the audience, comment down below if you heard about a new site or training that you're going to try out. We'd love to hear from you what you're excited about. Jamie shared a lot, and I definitely have a few more that I'm going to check out that I haven't been to. So thank you again so much, Jamie. Thank you, guys. It's been great. And everyone, look me up on LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help. Yeah, he's a great guy. Check him out. But, you know, everyone have a great week. This is a great uh, video. So, you know, we'll see you next see week. See you next week. Thank you.